just dropped a huge update for my Motion Tools plugin, which was one of my most popular plugins for Final Cut Pro. For those of you that don't know what Motion Tools is, I've essentially jumped inside of Apple Motion and found over a hundred different effects and tools that are not over inside of Final Cut. And I've gone ahead and just published those so that you have easy access and you don't need to jump back and forth between both programs. In fact, you don't even need Apple Motion to use all of these tools. Now with this particular update, I've really focused on adding in all of the different generators found over inside of Apple Motion, as well as the ability to use replicators. So in this video, I'm gonna quickly show you how to use some of these new tools to your advantage so you can build powerful looking motion graphics all right inside of Final Cut Pro. First thing I of course want to focus on is going up into our titles and generators and locating motion tools. In here, you're gonna see that I've added a whole bunch of new powerful features. For example, we've got caustics, cellular, checkerboard, clouds, concentric polka dots, manga lines, lens flares, one color rays, radial bars, stars, spirals, all sorts of different options to build beautiful graphics. But then underneath that is this new numbers generator. This is a feature that I'm super excited about bringing over into Final Cut Pro, and it's something that I really think needs to be part of the base program. So to get started, let's go ahead and add in a nice base backdrop. I'm gonna go ahead and use these Trucat tiles because I just really like how these look. And you'll notice that they even come with a nice on-screen control that I can click and drag around as I like. Moving over to the right side, one thing we can do is animate this background moving. Making sure our playhead is on the very first frame, let's go ahead and find this center parameter. I will click to add a keyframe, then I will move to the very end of our animation and we could just type in the number one and that will animate it over nicely. So if I push play, you can see how it's automatically animating to that upper right hand corner. Underneath that, we can adjust stuff like the tile size. So if we want those to be much larger, we could change these over to be arcs, which is really cool looking or dots or pipes. And there's even a custom option, which brings in a whole bunch of other variables and you can use a drop zone to drive the shape. However, I just happen to like how the diagonal lines looks for right now. Then I can also adjust the colors. So I'm gonna just set this secondary color to be a dark gray, and that's just gonna give us a nice minimalist look. But I wanna add a bit Bit more texture to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the add noise filter found over inside of my regular motion tools. So I'll just look up add noise and we can apply that on as a stylized filter. Right now it looks like a total mess. Let's go ahead and jump inside of our video inspector. Let's change the amount over to Gaussian noise. Let's set it to be monochrome and we could even change the blend mode over to something like screen. And then from there, I'm gonna bring the mix way down so it's much more subtle. However, right now as it is, it's animating and that's giving us kind of a static look. So to change that, I'm going to disable this auto animate and now we have just a nice texture happening in the backdrop. Next on this list, I wanna go ahead and use a flare to really flesh out this backdrop. I'm gonna drag that down from our generators onto the timeline and inside of our generator settings, we can adjust all sorts of different options. For example, we could change the color. So I'll just set this to a nice orange color and we could dial in stuff like the outer ring and inner ring colors and streak colors, really they give you a ton of flexibility for this particular flare and we can of course move it around using the on-screen controls. But from there, I want it to blend nicely with the backdrop. Let's go back to the video inspector and find the blend mode. Right now it's set to normal. I'm just gonna set that over to screen. So now it's blending nicely in with our backdrop. I wanna add a bit of a vignette to this backdrop. There are many different ways you can add a vignette. I'm gonna go ahead and just select the TrueCut tiles and push command six to get me my color board, I can go ahead and actually I'm gonna use color wheels cause that's my preferred way. And I will add a shape mask and then we can just expand this out quite a bit. And I'm going to set the outside to be darker than the inside and that's giving us a nice little vignette there. Finally, I wanna add one more bit of flare here at the bottom using another powerful new feature that's found with motion tools and that is bringing in replicators. Replicators can be applied to pretty much anything you can possibly think of, but one of my favorite ways to use replicators is to apply them onto shapes. 
I'm gonna go ahead and actually use my FCB's Pro Shapes. You can use any sort of circle you can find, but my Pro Shapes tool has just a lot of extra features that I like. For example, these on-screen controls and I can adjust the scale directly on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the outline and the drop shadow and I'm going to change the color of this to be white. So it's just a very plain circle. Going to our motion tools, I'm gonna look up the replicate features. And in here, you can see that I have nine of them that I can work with. One of my absolute favorites favorites is this wave replicator. I'm going to go ahead and apply that onto the circle and you'll see now that that gives me two control points that I can adjust where this wave is going. So I want this wave to go from left to right just like so and from there I'm going to push command minus to zoom out and we can just bring this down to the bottom of the screen. Then going into our video inspector I'll scroll on down and find these scale parameters and I can drag those up quite a bit just to get a good idea of how I want these circles to be on the screen but I also want these dots to actually be a solid line and that is where replicators are super cool if we find the points I can go ahead and just drag those points all the way up until we have a perfectly smooth line just like so now what's super cool is I can also adjust the animation on this line by using this phase rotation handle so let's go back to the very first frame and we'll find our phase we'll click to add a keyframe we'll go to the very end and then we can just animate this phase by dragging dragging up the number value. So now it has this nice animation to it. But I also want this water wave shape to match the colors of the backdrop. So scrolling down, we'll find our opacity gradient and we can just adjust this to be whatever color we want. So I'm just gonna make it orange and we could even do an orange shadow. So it's kind of got a nice dark gradient to it. But I'm also going to use a blend mode to really bring it into the scene. So under our blend modes, I'm gonna set this over to overlay and I just love how that looks. So now we have this really beautiful unique looking backdrop all we need to do is now bring in something that we want in focus say for example our new numbers generator so to achieve that, we'll go back to our motion tools generators, scroll on down and you'll see here our numbers. I'll just apply that onto the timeline and you'll see that I have on-screen control so I can get this exactly into position where I want it on this nice lens flare. Let's go into the generator settings and the first thing you'll notice is that there's an animate checkbox. That means that these numbers are going to automatically animate from the first start value to the end value over the entire duration of our generator. For example, if I want Wanted this to animate all the way up to 50,000 over the duration of my generator. I could just type in 50,000 and now I can celebrate 50,000 subscribers automatically as it counts up for me. Additionally, if I wanted to manually animate this number, I can go ahead and disable that animate value. We'll go back to the beginning or to wherever you really want this animation to take place and we'll find the value parameter. I can click to add a keyframe, move forward a bit, slide that value up as much as I want. If I want to go beyond the 100 value, I can just click and drag directly on the numbers and so now Final Cut Pro will automatically count up for me in that short duration of time that we've just set up. You can force it to have decimal points so if I want it to go all the way to 1733 and we could type in an actual decimal point of 44 so now it will count up with the decimal values. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. We can also change the format so right now it's set to number but if I want it to be currency now it adds a nice dollar sign. We could change it to be percent. We could change it to be sign scientific or we could have it spell out every single number which is really crazy then scrolling further down you're going to notice this random checkbox this is if you need to build a random number generator so to use this let's go ahead and recheck this animate checkbox and now it's going to choose a number between 1 and 50,000 if i go ahead and check this box for random and i'll go ahead and change the random seed every single frame is going to change this number value so if i push play it is changing numbers crazy crazy fast. If I wanted to slow this animation down, that is what the random hold frame is for. So right now it's set to one. Let's just set this to 10. And now it's going to take 10 frames before it changes this number value. So if I push play, you can see the numbers are going through much slower so you can really comprehend what number is being shown. Finally, at the bottom, if we wanted to change our font, we could go ahead and do just that. We could change it over to a nice bold Roboto font. We could change the tracking on it, or you could even set it to be mono space which is really cool we could adjust the colors so if I wanted to be an orange color or maybe a teal color we could do that we could add in a nice outline let's go ahead and make this a nice white outline drag up the width on that so now we can really see those numbers all of the settings that you might possibly need to create a beautiful looking number generator 
for your channel are here inside of Final Cut Pro. So that is just barely scratching the surface of everything you can do with motion tools inside of Final Cut Pro without the need to jump back over into Apple Motion. If you're interested in picking up motion tools, make sure you use the links down below. There's also a discount code as a thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in finding out even more tools that are found inside of the motion tools pack, you may want to check out this video. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. I just dropped a huge 